out if you don't make a mark Silence, compliance, let Santas get smart Never a truth in a word that they write Don't listen or take it to heart Stand up and be counted with your boots on the ground And watch for the cars with banners be loud Last generations will never be found So the numbers rise up to your martyrs proud Keep it up, keep it up, keep waiting more So keep it up and make the haters hate you You fall back and just do your part A timeless defiance bites worse than its bark Whatever the pressure, we all stand and fight Won't listen or tear us apart The inmates are taken over the asylum Look sharp and focus in place to keep up with Cracks in their castles, we must never be bound Let the numbers rise up to your martyrs proud What's happening all? It's Jeff back with another lesson for you all. Hope everybody's keeping well. I'm gonna let a couple of people drop in. Um, as I've mentioned in the previous lessons, um, this I was gonna try and get the chat on here. Let's have a look and see if we've managed to, uh, to do this or not. Chat is ready to display, well, let's see. So, um, how's everyone doing? Someone say hello, so I know what's going on. So tonight is going to be all about um, the beginner, really. Now, what I've done with these lessons is we aim the, the the Tuesday night lessons towards beginners. Now, when I say at the beginner, it doesn't mean you have to be a beginner drummer. You might have been playing drummers for 20 years, but I'm going to talk it in a way, present it in a way that a beginner can at least get it. All right, We're not going to do really easy stuff tonight, actually. Um, Thursday lessons are a bit more advanced than the Saturday. There's really advanced stuff. Um, let us know where you're from. Who's dropping in? Hopefully, I can see some of these messages on here. Dusty, hello. It's popped up on here, so I hope you're well. Um, we're streaming over to YouTube as well tonight, so if you're watching over on YouTube, then um, then say hello. What we normally do then? Right, so we normally start off with a bit of a warm-up to get the hands going, let people drop in. The warm-up is going to be related to the actual um, lesson. Uh, then we'll do the main part of the lesson at the end we'll do question and answers if you want to ask any questions at any point during the lesson type them in if you're watching this after the event i.e like tomorrow the next day two weeks time um, you can still leave comments in there and ask questions I'll, I'll see those and i'll do my best to answer them the um so this thing we're going to start off with tonight then is going to relate to some triplets and we're going to just start off by just doing the top line there, letter A. Now, what I've done is underneath, I've written something for some the more advanced drummers to maybe try out while, the, while the, the, the newer drummers are trying the top bar. So what we've got there is we've got Swiss triplets. Swiss triplets is a really easy rudiment. It's just two right hands 
and one left hand. Now we play it in triplets, as in like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but we could put it into sixteenth notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a. Right, however, for tonight we're gonna to start with triplets. Um, and so we're gonna literally just play that anywhere you fancy on the drums. I'm just gonna do it on a snare to begin with. And straight away what I do is I take that to the drums so I get a bit of a melody going on. I'm gonna put two rights here, two rights here, and so on, right like this. The most common place to put accents is the first note and then the second one a little bit quiet and the third one fairly quiet, more like this. However, for tonight, it doesn't matter what you do, right? It doesn't matter if it's loud or quiet. Then we're going to move to the next bar, that one on the top right hand corner, and we're going to play a linear pattern. So we're just going to play a bass drum, a right hand and a left hand. Simple as it gets, alright? So we do four Swiss triplets, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, and four linear threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, do, 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 do. I'll play it once so you can see it. As I said a moment ago, Towards the end of the lesson, we're going to be getting more and more and more advanced. So for you guys who want to hang out now, um, and this is really easy for you, um, have a go at the one that's underneath. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some hi-hats in line with the quarter notes, and then we're pretending it, we're kind of morphing it into a 16th note um, variation, as in like one E under, two E under, um, like this. And then we're going up to... the chiplet. But all at the same tempo, right? Now, so let's get a metronome on for the newer guys. So a couple of things. Um, during this lesson, if I go too fast or if you don't get anything, type in and let me know. Um, if we if we come across something that, um, that you, you want me to play slower or you want me to hear it fast or you've got any questions about anything to do with the drums or drums in general, then um, please let me know. Just ask a question straight away, all right? I'm just gonna quickly check one thing. So we've been doing these lessons on Facebook now for, well, since lockdown basically. So it's gotta be about six weeks now, maybe longer. Um, and I've started also doing it over on YouTube. Now, the only thing is I'm sat so far away from the PC, I can't see if the YouTube feed is working or not. So I'm gonna quickly check now. Um, okay, well, it seems to be live. Awesome. So if you're on YouTube, say hi so I know you're there. Oh, okay, so Mark's already said it. Working live on YouTube. Wicked. All right, awesome. Thanks, guys, for that. Thanks for checking that. Okay, right, so let's have a go at putting a metronome with this. Now, even for guys who've been playing a little bit a little bit longer, this will still be a useful exercise. So yeah, I've got this at the moment set as... What's, let's have a listen to what we've got here. We've got... No, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll start off by getting the fella shouting at us. So one, two, three, four. Let's go like slow as anything, like 60 beats. One and dot, two and dot, three two and slow, dot, right? four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one Okay, so 76 one beats a minute, real slow still, still real simple. Four We're going to try and play that top line, right? If you're just on a practice pad, just follow through. Four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot. Okay, let's go a little bit faster. One and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, two and dot, three and dot, four and dot, one and dot, 
two and dot three and dot. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get rid of the voice. So we've just got the uh, the chip that's going, i.e. this. And that means that now we can think of those as triplets, as in one triplet, two triplet, or sixteenths. One e and a two e and a three e and a four. And we're gonna play the same pattern now for the guys who are just dropping in. Beginners are along the top, just keep it nice and simple. More advanced guys are going for the second line down that you can see. The second half then will be basically, I've written it in triplets just so that it looks the same, but I'm thinking of it of eighth notes or sixteen. So I'm kind of going like a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The trick then is to not do what I just did then, to change tempo, but keep the same tempo, but change the left foot. So more advanced guys, have a go at doing that, right? Let's stick with these beginners though for the moment. Let's just go a little bit faster, see if we can push it a little bit. So Swiss triplets, one, two, Let's restart to push the speed now. Uh, quickly, uh, Bradley from Georgia. And uh, what we got, Robert from Wisconsin. Hi, uh, guys, thanks for dropping in. Um, if it's your first time on these lessons, my name's Jeff. Um, you probably follow me on YouTube anyway, if you've picked, up, picked it up on YouTube. Um, these lessons are going Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Today's aimed a little bit more at beginners, um, but um, we'll get onto some interesting stuff a little bit later in the lesson. So thanks for watching. Hope you're well over there in the States. Um, and Natalie. A little bit late. Okay, that's cool. So Troy's just dropping in now. So what we've got then, we've got the bounce triplets, uh, Swiss triplets along the top, and then the linear pattern. We're trying to push the speed a little bit now. Now this metronome, I'm trying to lock in with that. Ba -ba 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 every single note, right? One, two. We can play that a lot faster, right? So, so you get guys get an idea. Let's take it up. That was 130. So, if I take it up to 150 or something like that. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. And in all see the more advanced players, this is quite easy to kind of go real quick at. So what we're doing, we're just trying to get um, these these two particular patterns into your head because we're going to be using those later in the lesson. But this is the sort of thing that I might do just as a quick two, three minute warm up before I get on the kit, before I get on the kit. Um, not just this pattern, but this is the sort of thing I'd make up. So I might might now do say two of each. I might go. maybe even one of each. And then if you get an idea where you can take a real simple thing and get more and more and more um, advanced. Dave from Chesine, Sunny Chesine. Anyone doesn't know, that's where I live as well. Okay, right, where are we going with this then? Let's get into the main part of the lesson. So today we are going to look at the idea of using a pickup. Now a pickup is basically, for us as drummers, um, is a basically a way of us making our, our field sound a little bit more interesting. Now most people who play drums for more than six weeks have got some kind of field. Now it might be that you're just starting and this is the field you're going to do. Right, 
might or it might be you've been playing for 20 years and this do some crazy inverted latin um linear rudiment okay all right whichever one you want to go for is absolutely fine today i'm going to play pretty much mostly that feel that you can see on the screen there which is just six here six here and four here so like this Everyone down with that at the moment? Keep it up. Oh, thanks for dropping in. Hope you're well. So what are we going to do now? What is a leading? What is this weird word? Anacrusis. Now, I, I've never called it anacrusis in my life, right, until today. Um, it's a, a, the correct term, right? But everyone calls it a pickup or a leading. Now, all it is is basically when a song starts on one, so it goes one, two, three, four, one, there's some, no some notes that lead into that. So uh, the, the example you can kind of find on the internet is happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. What everyone knows. Happy Happy bur, so that's the leading. Happy bur, so the happy, that's the leading. And the birthday to you is the actual song. For so for us as drummers, it might be a leading is as simple as just this. It might be, or it might be some a lot more, lot more, uh, lot longer in length. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're just going to be doing this idea of dropping the bass drum in before we play something. That's the step one. Um, so the first one you can see, all I'm doing, I'm dropping in a note the same distance apart as all the rest of them, as in the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but one before, so it sounds like this. And as I, as I said to the more advanced players, play whatever feel you want. Like you haven't got to play the easy feel I'm doing, I'm doing at the moment, right? This is this is for the guys who are a little bit newer. Um, if you want to play that feel and put more of these little um, lead-ins in, then you could put one before each of those seconds to go. Now, the best way I've heard these described, and I'm going to get the word here right, but there was uh, wrong, I should say. There's, there's two guys on uh, YouTube, I'm sure they're all over social media, called The Drum Coaches. Two guys from, I think, California. Uh, they teach a lot of gospel chop stuff and that kind of thing. And they've got a, a video somewhere that I've seen called something like Bacadada or something like that. I think that's what it is, actually. Bacadada Boogadi Boogadi, right? Something like that, right? However, right, the, the name is irrelevant. The way that they describe a lot of things is just using simple terminology, which for me is perfect. If someone could teach me something in 10 seconds that would, someone else would take three hours, I'm going with the 10 second. And so with these, I just call these um, bukas. So all we're doing is we're starting a fill by going buka. So we're going one, two, three, four, buka. One, two, three, four, buka. Now what I go after the ka, buka in this case would go buka, ka, 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 So, buka. Let's move forward a little bit further then. I'm just seeing a load of people dropping in, so just to let you know what's going on. So, tonight is aimed towards beginners, so I'm going to be talking a little bit in beginner terminology, um, but the lesson's applicable for other people as well. Um, Thursday night is a little bit more in-depth, and the Saturday is where we really deep into, into, into advanced drumming. So let's have a look at that. So what we do on this one. Well, what we're doing now is we're still doing the buka, but the buka is a little bit closer now because we're doing sixes. So the fill is this. I think of hickory dickory. Hickory dickory. And then hickory dickory. Hickory dickory. Hickory dickory. Here's it without the buka. Right, so I'll play just a second bar. And if I put the bouquet in there, the little lead in. This was obviously much more interesting when you see it fast. So.
but it works fine to learn it really slow. So that's stolen, the concept. I don't know if they call it buka, but that's what I call it when I'm teaching, all right? So buka. Right, so let's go forward a little bit then. So start lesson, why did I get you guys doing the Swiss triplet? Well, you can see here, the other thing that we can put into fills to make them a bit more interesting uh, is, is these alternative four stroke roughs. So a rough is normally done with single strokes, right? One, two, three, four. So if we think of bucket of fish, bucket of fish, bucket of fish, bucket of fish. Well, fish is the damn beat, right? So it's going, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three. Now, with, um, with, the, with the rough, you can have it real close. You could go like one, two, but we're going to do it as a, a specific meter type here. And you can see on the, on the screen that we're doing it as a 16 kind of triplet. So I'm going and three, and three. So we're basically going one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So we're coming on the and of two, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And what you can see is I've got it alternate full stroke rough because it's got the alternate sticking and the sticking is the same as we did at the start lesson it's the swiss triplet so we're going to go so three which is the triplet and then releasing up one more note so we're going one and two da -ga -da -da. two three four one and two two three four one and two two three four one and two now that could then lead into to anything right? it could lead into to whatever fill you, you particularly want to put there i'm just on that particular on that one there letter d i'm just going to two lots of 16th notes so i'm going to help you hear the difference between those two meter types there for you newer drummers i would put that on the toms so tom three to tom one and then comes the snare so i'm going give you this now I'm assuming a lot faster so let's try it let's set the metronome on this time I'm going to stick it in counting fours I'm going to get our trusty counter back we'll play one and two we'll play both bars actually all right let's make it nice and simple oops let's just get him on let's get it about what, what's, what's that like seven and five beats a minute something like that one two three four one two and three so that's reasonably four, quick actually we'll try one, that and so two, two and three, three all and of day. four and one and two and three and 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 four and what we're trying to do now, we'll try the longer version. So letter E is the same thing, but I'm going back to that field at the start. Now let's do it with the Met again, keep you guys up. One and two, two and three, three and four and one and two and 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 three three and four. I'm going to push the speed a little bit now. So at the moment, any questions? Everyone keeping up? Everyone know what's going on here, yeah? If not, don't forget, I can't see your faces, right? It's not like a, a lesson where you sat in front of me and I can see he's getting a bit confused this. I need to break it down more. Or, Jesus, this, this is way too slow. If he's got that face as well, I can spot that. So let me know. Right, we're going to speed up a little. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and 
and four in. Cool, cheers, Dusty, for that. So anybody else um, who, who's, who wants to do more advanced things, then put advanced fields in there. Just start with that. into whatever you want on that pattern all right the, the takeaway from today is just the idea of this leading this thing that's happening here um okay right this is one that i think most of you guys would enjoy the most it's certainly one that, that i like to use the most so um what we've now got is we've still got the same pattern the same tune da -da 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 so that little triplet one and two and three and four triple that stop but what we're doing now is we're doing that little linear pattern that goes bass right left and then into the fill so it's now going to go I just think of like the Adams family. But we're going obviously into a fill. So let's try the same thing, but with a metronome. On one and two and three and four and one and two. So it's two going to come on the and. Three and four and one. So it's going to come in on two uh, the and of four. Three and Four and one and two and 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 three and Two and three and four and one 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 and two Two and three and four and one and. Now this concept then of, of the leading can be put onto any fill. I know I keep saying that, but I can't stress that enough. But it could also be kind of starting and stop, so we could do things like this. Or we could kind of, um, what would you call it, like solo, but uh, I'm not getting the right word here, like a random solo, not necessarily in time, over the top of that. So I, I might just sit and ad lib. Sort of thing you might do just to sit in what you're trying to think of a, in the middle of a solo. What the hell am I going to play? What the hell am I going to play? I'll do that for a bit, and then all of a sudden, oh, something's come to my head now. Now I can go and play that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do a you know two minute drum solo just playing those. Okay, so that's the most that's the content of today's lesson done. What I like to do at the end of the lesson, as you guys know now, is have some questions. So if anyone's got any questions to do with any of the stuff we've done today or any other stuff, it could be about technique, it could be about the lessons, it could be um, any of that stuff. Start to think of those and type those now. I'm going to round this all up to sort of give you um, a, a, an overview of everything we've done. Before I do that, let's quickly make sure that everybody knows what. So you can see here, tonight's pretty much aimed at beginners, so I've kept it fairly simple. Intermediate Thursday and advanced on Saturday. I'm still open to um, ideas for lessons. I've had a few people message me to say, "Oh, could you do some of this? Could you do some of that?" Um, the idea was I was going to do these lessons over the lockdown, which for us musicians just keeps becoming like the future rather than just locked out it's just going on and on and on and on and on so i don't know how long these are going to go on for um but as long as you guys are getting something from it and enjoying it then um then i'll keep doing them um, if you do enjoy these lessons a lot then please share them type people's names in so other people come and check them out um like comment and all that kind of stuff 
Uh, they'll be up on YouTube afterwards for you to check out if you want to go back and watch again. Um, and the same on Facebook. And the lesson notes will be posted to freestyleridiments.com. So if you go up there, um, www.freestyleridiments.com and click on where it says sheets and then the notation from today will be in there. So let's just quickly go back through what we're talking about then. Well, you guys are thinking something to, uh, to ask. So what we've got then, we've got Swiss triplets at the top. Then linears. So that in itself might be a, a six week study of just trying to get good at those. And what else could you do with that? Well, you could put accents in there. You could keep time with your bass drum. You could put the right hands on a hi-hat, for instance, and play bass drums with it. You can do it left-handed, left, left, right, left, left, right, and you've got all the variations you can do off that. So those are Swiss triplets, right? Linear threes, bass, right, left. The obvious thing to do those is just put them around the kit. The other thing that we might start to do with those is try and keep some time with the left foot. It's a lot more difficult for you new guys though. So if I do it all on here, so you can hear, so I'm gonna be going. I'm trying to keep my left foot keeping the pace. And then the more advanced guys, if you remember what I was trying to suggest to you guys is you could really spice that up. So with your left foot, instead of just playing the simple pattern that we've just shown you there on the left hand side, you could go for that one on the right hand side. And again, obviously, yeah, you can go past those. And then all of the other stuff was just about leading. So when you're playing your fills from now on, even if it's if it's hard fill, right? If it's the easiest fill, it doesn't matter. Whatever fill you're about to play. So say you're doing a six-stroke roll. Can you have a lead it? If you're going to play parallels, can you put a longer lead in? So the stuff that we did here with the roughs or with the bass drums, you'll get a guy. Maybe that one at the bottom, letter F, you can just about see. Can I do that into a parallel? Right, my hope is then that you get something from that. You get a little bit of inspiration that you'll go off and try and turn into something else. So someone's put on here, um, your beginners must be good now. So to be fair, Jesse, you're right. For someone who's just starting out, this is probably pretty, pretty difficult. Um, one of the things that's really difficult on these lessons, I'll be real straight with you, is that um, all I can see on my screen over there, I wish I could turn the camera on so you can see. Basically, I've got um, my notation on one screen. I've got my note, let me just move this across. I've got a notation on one screen, and on the other screen, I've got a picture of what you're seeing of me. And in the top right hand corner, it just says Facebook and YouTube, which is where we're streaming to, and how many people are watching. 
And that's probably the most distracting thing ever because what I start to see is the numbers go up or down. And whenever I do real slow, easy stuff, I just see the numbers going down, 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 down. Now, that's not the end of the world. For you beginners, I still want to give you content. But I know the way the algorithm works is when you start to get no one watching, Facebook or YouTube just assumes, oh, that must be bad content. Don't give that to anybody else. And so I'm kind of playing this balancing game between doing stuff that's difficult enough for people to um, to sit and watch and um, easy enough that people can actually take something from it still. So let me know your thoughts on that. I'm interested to know whether you enjoy the easier stuff or the difficult stuff. Um, I'm aware that sometimes it's fun to just watch difficult stuff. I've had some guys say that they just like to sit and watch the difficult stuff just to kind of take it in rather than maybe learn it. Um, but I've also found, found the same on YouTube. Some of the most um, demanding stuff I've put up that's took me the longest to learn and make the videos from I've had the lowest views and when I put something up that just says like um, easy cool feel loads of people loads of people sit and watch it um, Tim Bowes hope you're well mate Tim's an awesome drummer from Coventry if you're over that way and looking for private lessons give him a shout we just had awesome setup so uh, yeah cheers Tim uh, Tim gave me a bit of a break when I was first starting out in Birmingham so Tim ran a music shop some of you got older guys watching would I might remember musical exchanges in Birmingham and then it turned into sound control. Well, above there, there was a shop called Pro Drum, which was a drum school which Tim ran. And um, that was the first drum shop that I started teaching at with a guy called Ash Sheehan, who you, some of you Birmingham guys might know as well. So thanks for that, Tim. Um, OK, have we got any questions? Any other questions coming in? Someone asked me about these actually the other day. So I've got a video on YouTube if you want to check them out properly, but all they are is they're just symbol wing nuts that are quick release. So if you're at a gig and you want to get out of the gig really quick, it takes another 30 seconds to do that one. No, that's a minute, that's a minute and a half, that's two minutes, about, and it adds a few minutes on, right? But when you play in things like covers bands or you're in original bands and you want to get on and off stage really quick, just being able to squeeze that and take it off, it just saves a precious few seconds. Um, I've never had a problem with one. I've never had them break yet, and I've had them for a good couple of years. These are the, um, the Tama, I believe and um i'm sure there's other brands but yeah i never had a problem with them they're pretty cool okay there's no questions i'm going to wrap up there as i said um i'll be back again with some stuff for you guys at the intermediate level on thursday and then more advanced on saturday what would be awesome for me is if you guys could go and check out my stuff on youtube um, you can see there it's jeff fry drummer and my you, my Instagram channel, Jeff Fry Drummer. Um, again, as I've just said, the way that the algorithm works is if people comment or people watch the whole video or people put thumbs up, YouTube shows to more people. The more people see it, the more um, impetus there is on me to do more of the videos. At the moment, I'm putting out new videos at least every three days. I'm trying to do it a bit more often. I've got a big backlog of things on my computer that I'm ready to record. Um, so I've just got to get around to doing it. The, there's a bit of a misconception about YouTube that if you've got, like I've got, what is it, like 4,000 followers, four or 5,000 followers on there, that if you've got that many, you're making loads of money, you're not. You're not making money until your videos get literally like a million views. So um, it's not it's not a money maker for me on, on there. But um, I would still appreciate if you go over there and either subscribe if it's your kind of thing or, or maybe just check out the videos. So I'll see you all again on Thursday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.